All right, so finally we got this Peak Smart Charger. This charger actually really impressed me. I kind of bought it as a fluke. Um, I needed a battery charger for work. We have been working on a lot of cars. They're called auction cars. And the problem with these auction cars is they're in transit a lot. They sit dormant for long periods of time and their batteries just become severely discharged, which can be a real big pain trying to move the cars around the shop. So I ended up buying this charger. I thought, you know, whenever I get one of these auction cars in my stall, I'm just gonna charge a battery it up and make everybody's life a little bit easier around the shop. So this is uh, a fully automatic charger, which means there's no manual mode. So once again, you may run into a situation where you're trying to charge a battery and it is so severely discharged that this charger is not gonna start up because it does not sense enough voltage. And like I said earlier, your best bet in that situation is to use jumper cables in parallel with a good battery to kind of boost that voltage up so the charger will start charging. Uh, the other way you get around that too, like when I was using this charger at the shop, we also had a big wheel charger unit and that unit had a manual mode. So basically what I do in that scenario is if I had a situation where this charger didn't sense enough voltage, I'd go get the manual charger, I'd let it charge for probably a half an hour and once again, I probably didn't even have to do that. I could have just hooked it up, waited like a minute. The voltage would have came up on the battery. I could have quickly swapped over to this one, plugged it in, should have started up. The other thing with these smart chargers too is even in a situation like that, if the voltage gets up high enough and I swap this one on, it might not start charging. It'll stay idle. And that's because it senses such a high voltage. But all you have to do is wait. The voltage is going to come down on the battery and it will eventually trigger this charger to start charging. What's really cool about these new chargers is that they are intelligent. This charger has a 4 amp, a 12, and a 25, which in the situation I was using it in at the shop, that worked out great. Having this 25 amp mode was pretty awesome. Because I really didn't have time to charge a battery all day. And once again, that's not really the best case scenario. Um, to give a battery a proper charge, I think you really need to use the lowest amperage setting and just let it take its time. But you have to figure that if a battery is severely discharged, charging at a low 1.5 amp, that could take two days for that battery to charge up. Obviously, I don't have two days to get a battery charged when I'm in a shop situation. So what's nice about that is I could hook this up uh, you can switch between the different modes, you know. When you first hook it up, it's automatically on 4 amp. And for whatever reason, this charger does not exceed 3.9 when it's on the 4 amp, but whatever, that's kind of irrelevant. Um, you push this button here, it'll switch to 12. And what's really nice is this digital display will show you real time how many amps that battery is pulling. So basically what would happen is I would hook this up to a battery, plug it in, it's going to come online, it's going to automatically click onto the 4 amp mode, and if it jumps up to 3.9 and stays there, I'll push this button over here, change it to the 12 amp, and it should, it'll either jump up to 12 or some number between 12 and 4. So if it jumps up to 12 and stays there, it's like okay, it might need more amperage than that. So you can push this button again, it's going to click over to the 25 amp mode. And if the battery is that severely discharged, it's going to go all the way up to 25 amps. So at that point in time, you can just leave it. Once you've set it to the 25 amp mode, it's automatic. You're going to see on the digital display, it's going to show 25 amps. And depending on how discharged the battery is, it's eventually going to start coming down. And what I really like about that is I have a real-time indication of how much amperage is being pulled out from this charger. And the other chargers, they all have a uh, needle indicating amperage. But to me, it's kind of inaccurate. Uh, the analog needle is, it's hard to read. And with any kind of uh, reading voltage, to me, I personally prefer to have a digital readout. It's way more accurate. And you have to understand that your voltage readings on a battery, you know, the difference between 12.1 and 12.6 is literally a dead battery versus a fully charged battery. So you need that accuracy 
to get to a tenth of a volt. The other thing that's nice too is this other button here. You know, when you fire this charger up, it's going to show you the current, which is the amperage draw. And if you push this button, it's going to show you the voltage output real time. And if you push the button again, it's going to give you battery capacity in a percentage. And I believe anything below 60% of a full charge will just say low. And then it goes up from there. It'll show you 60, 70, 80, 90, uh, all the way up to fully charged. Another nice thing about this charger, it will charge until the amperage reads zero, but that doesn't necessarily mean that it's done charging the battery. You'll see it sitting there at zero, and it will periodically throw amperage at that battery, and you'll see it happen. It'll jump up to three or two amps and steadily go back down to zero. And basically, it's the charger topping off that charge. It's letting everything absorb in there. It's throwing more amperage at it when it needs it. And when this battery charger is finished charging a battery, it'll say full, F-U-L, that's when it's actually done. So that's kind of cool too. Like I said, what I really like about this charger has got to be the fact that it's got this digital display. It's fully automatic. It's kind of a set it and forget it. The other thing that's cool too is seeing the real-time amp draw. It gives you a really good idea of like, okay, if I plug this battery charger in, and after a couple minutes, it's already down to two amps. I know that that battery has not been that significantly discharged and that it's going to be charged pretty quickly. However, if I plug this thing in and it's going to pull 25 amps, it's like, okay, well, this battery definitely needed a charge. And being an intelligent charger, it's going to safely charge that battery. Although I will say if you have a, an AGM battery, I don't think I would exceed 12. I would stay at the 12 amp setting. Uh, with an AGM battery, I think you're risking uh, getting bubbles forming inside of the uh, fiberglass matting. It can kind of damage the battery. So with an AGM battery, I would definitely do the lowest rate you can. And sometimes you're in a pinch, you're trying to get it charged up as quick as possible. So that's when I would jump up to the 12 amp setting. So there you have it between all these chargers. Uh, like I said, I really like the new smart chargers because they are so intelligent. They're going to back off the amperage based on real-time information that charger is getting from the battery. I think it does a better job of charging the battery. And uh, it's nice to have that real-time information. So to me, it kind of makes the smart charger the winner in a lot of these scenarios. Although any of these chargers are going to charge a battery. It just depends on how quickly you want to do it. So. Basically with this charger, the only thing you have to be concerned about is you might want to have a set of jumper cables just in case you have to connect two batteries in parallel to get that voltage up to trigger this charger. And the other thing will be any of these chargers are going to do a good job. I would go for the automatic setting, especially if you don't know how to charge a battery. And to me, the manual setting is kind of obsolete. It's just you have the automatic features, so why not use it? It's way easier. So kind of getting back into, you know, most of these chargers are 2 amp, 10 amp, getting into the different amperage. Basically the different amperage is how powerful the charge is. So getting into that 25 amp range, it's a much higher output. And the higher output is going to charge the battery quicker. So having that option is always good. Now, like I said, to me, that worked out really good in a shop scenario where a customer needed their car back quickly or whatever. But at home, it was kind of irrelevant. I mean, I don't even use a 25 amp at home. That's, I don't need to. I don't have to have this battery charged as quickly as possible. So I'm going to set it to the lowest setting and just let it do its thing. And that kind of goes back to the battery maintainers. I think most people would benefit from just having a battery maintainer. You buy a nice onboard battery maintainer, you install it in the car, you stay on top of plugging it in and letting it do its thing every night. And actually depending on the weather, you really wouldn't even have to do it nightly. As the weather gets colder, you're going to move into doing it nightly. But as the weather warms up, I don't even use it that often. I mean, I might 
plug it in once a week just to see if it takes a charge. And surprisingly, sometimes it does, even when it's 90 some degrees outside. So as far as choosing a charger, I would lean towards the automatic ones. I really like the intelligent smart chargers. Uh, you can find them anywhere. I mean, they're pretty readily available at an auto parts store or even any kind of general store usually that has an automotive section is going to have something like this. But I mean, I would say most people don't even need a full blown battery charger. I think all they really need to do is buy a battery maintainer and that's going to fully charge your battery and plus you're going to get that maintenance mode. And kind of going back to this charger, this charger claims to have a, a maintenance mode, but I wouldn't really classify it as a maintenance mode because it doesn't really float the battery out at 13 volts. It will charge a battery to about 13 volts and then it's just going to kind of stop. And it's going to monitor that battery so when it drops below a preset voltage level it's going to start charging it again. And that's fine. I mean that is kind of a it's almost a maintenance mode. But to me a true maintainer is going to keep that 13 volts constant. So like I said, if you're in the market for a battery charger, it really depends on how quickly you're looking to charge batteries. And also keep in mind that a battery charger is not going to maintain a battery, and pretty much every battery should have a maintainer. So I would say for most people, they're going to look at getting a maintainer or an onboard maintainer. That's pretty much going to solve any of your battery charging needs. And you're probably going to be either an automotive technician or someone from that level to need a full-blown battery charger. Alright, so hopefully just going through these chargers has given you a good idea of um, how they work, the different advantages of certain chargers, and uh, hopefully it'll give you some more information so when you sit down and decide, hey, I'm looking to get a battery charger, what do I actually need? So if you have any questions or comments, go ahead, feel free to leave them on the video. I'll be happy to answer any questions you have. Alright guys, thanks for watching. Thank <laughs> you.